Tonight, in a historic vote, the FCC approves net neutrality in the United States. We'll tell you what it all means, so stick around. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 283 for Thursday, February 26th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you can grow and protect your wealth. Best of all, it's free. And for a limited time, Twit viewers and listeners could qualify for up to $10,000 on any new account. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Mike Elgin, filling in for Megan Maroney. Let's jump right into the news. The U.S. Federal Communications Commission today voted in favor of net neutrality in the United States. The vote was divided along party lines with three Democrats on the commission voting in favor and two Republicans voting against. In the year leading up to today's vote, a record four million citizens sent in comments, most of whom were in favor of net neutrality. Let's watch and listen to this historic moment. So let me close where I began with a shout out to four million Americans who took their time to share with us their views. Today, history is being made by a majority of this commission as we vote for a fast, fair, and open internet. And with that, I will call for the yeas and nays. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it. The item is passed. And there it is, net neutrality. Joining us to talk about today's vote is Tom Risen, a reporter for U.S. News and World Report who was in the room when it all happened. Welcome to you, Tom. Yes, thank you, Mike. Yeah, that uh, camera had, was um, right in front of me, actually, so you saw it from my point of view. I was sitting there the whole time. And, uh, yeah, quite an exciting vote. Uh, the uh, Republicans on the commission were not happy. They talked for half an hour each about what they viewed were the damages of uh, the, the uh the regulation. They thought it would damage business. They thought that it would slow down innovation. But uh, I talked to um, people who follow this space quite closely. They say that the uh, technolo technology companies have been saying that for 20 years. There's never been any evidence that it harms business or that it slows down innovation. And a lot of people from the tech industry were there. There were representatives from Apple. Uh, well, Etsy uh, representatives were there. People were talking about how Netflix has helped their business. Uh, it was a real great coming together of the tech industry, and they're excited that these new rules will prevent internet providers from blocking their traffic, slowing down their traffic, or overcharging for download speeds. In uh, uh, overcharging for download speeds, so uh, all websites should have an equal chance to compete online because of these net neutrality rules. Now, Tom, the vote today reclassifies broadband as a more heavily regulated service, of course, like the phone system. Uh, the ruling extends to mobile carriers as well, which. I wouldn't have predicted a few months ago. What specifically are Internet providers banned from doing under the new rules? Well, the Internet providers uh, have to abide by uh, these basic uh, provisions that I mentioned, like you can't slow down the traffic of your rivals. Uh, but there's broadly, they can't do anything that uh, dis that unreasonably harms their uh, businesses. Uh, th th some people, like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, are concerned about the broad interpretation of that. But uh, I spoke with uh, Apple uh, co-founder Steve Wozniak, who was there, who says that he's not worried about that, that the SEC has a good reputation of not taking regulation too far. Um, many watchers are not concerned about the regulation going too far. But uh, yeah, just basically, you can't block the traffic of your rivals. You can't slow down the traffic of your rivals, and you can't overcharge for them. Like a few months ago, there was talk that Comcast might be trying to pressure Netflix for paying for premium traffic speeds, and that would be forbidden under these new rules. Now, the vote today doesn't explicitly and completely ban interconnection deals. That's where a company like Netflix can pay for a faster pipe between their servers and the ISPs. Instead, they'll be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis whenever there's a complaint. But don't you think that consumers want some companies like Netflix to have to pay more for the massive bandwidth they consume? Yes, every time there's a major show that comes out like House of Cars, the traffic slows to a crawl because everybody downloads it at once. So uh, that's why 
the rules include unreasonable harm, because if there is a reasonable demand for something like that, then there's room for that. And that's why there is a case by case basis. And interconnection deals are odd. This is um, they've never really faced this kind of scrutiny before, you know, as um, until now, there hasn't been a real need to examine them this closely. So the FCC is taking a closer interest in them, not just in the net neutrality regulations, but they're going to be taking a closer look at this interconnection uh, deal business. So that's, yeah, th th there's going to be room for people to have their services that they love get faster speeds, but they don't want it to come at the expense of consumers who might have to pay a lot more for it. Now, President Obama today thanked the internet for getting involved in the net neutrality debate. He also thanked Redditors specifically saying, quote, thanks, Redditors, which I wish I could upvote every one of you for helping to keep the Internet open and free. And uh, hilariously, it was a handwritten note, which I don't think Redditors <laughs> have ever seen. Now, the president had previously made an impassioned plea for the independent FCC to vote in favor of net neutrality. Uh, do you think he was influential in this vote? Yeah, there were a lot of questions about whether he had uh, influenced the FCC to use Title II. The, one of the big controversies uh, among Republicans and uh, telecoms like AT&T is that Title II is the provision that the FCC uses to regulate phone companies. It makes it a public utility. The previous rules did not use this. And so um, they think that specifically by asking for Title II, President Obama influenced the FCC to use that provision. And uh, like a lot of Republicans like Commissioner Ajit Pai and Commissioner Michael O'Reilly were critical of that. Um, but there was a lot of pressure from, I was at the previous meetings and protesters would get up in the middle of the meeting and they say, these rules aren't strong enough. You should use stronger rules because the rules that were proposed by the commission last year didn't use Title II. They were concerns that they weren't that they would enable some loopholes for telecoms to charge for pay prioritization. So there was a lot of online demand for strong rules. I don't think it was just President Obama. Now, what happens now? I mean, what are the risks to net neutrality going forward? I guess what I'm asking is how could all of this be undone? Uh, what, what, what is this uh, ruling facing in terms of additional opposition? Well, I tell you, everybody knows, and uh, Tom we Chairman Wheeler has said this too, there will be another lawsuit to try to challenge this rule. Uh, Verizon Communications successfully sued last year. Um, the Federal Appeals Court uh, last January struck down the old rules. This is not the first time this has happened. Net neutrality has been debated for about a decade, and uh, there have been previous rules. The last ones were struck down just last January. Telecoms are going to try again. And um, one of the reasons that the commission has chosen Title II in the Communications Act that allows them to do this kind of regulation for phone companies because they think it will stand a legal challenge. And Republicans have a bill in Congress and Senate in the House that aims to do some of the things like banning blocking, banning uh, overcharging uh, in lieu of FCC regulation. They don't want the FCC to do it. They want Congress to do this kind of regulation because there's such a demand for it. So um, the bill in Congress probably won't go anywhere, at least while President Obama's president. The court case has the is the biggest risk for these new rules. Yeah, I, that was my uh, analysis as well on this morning's show, uh, simply because, you know, the politics right now is strongly in favor of net neutrality, and now to undo it would require an enormous... Uh, uh, pair, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's, it would be really uh, politically suicide to to try to undo this at this point. Tom Risen is at usnews.com, and you can follow him on Twitter at Tom Risen. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tom. Thank you, Mike. Coming up, big news from Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook. But first, let's talk about personal capital. It's a new year and a new time to start investing smarter. Personal capital has an easy way for you to do it. Plus, a very special offer for Twit viewers and listeners. For a limited time, when you open a new personal capital account, they'll give you $100 for every $100,000 you deposit, up to $10,000. It's a win-win. You get cash in your account and personalized investment advice from their registered investment advisors. Schedule your free one-on-one -on -one investment consultation today. I don't know how long this offer will be available. With their award-winning financial app, you can monitor your income, spending, and the performance of your investments in real time on a single easy-to-read screen. Find and eliminate high mutual fund and 401k fees and other hidden brokerage fees that may be costing you years off your retirement. Best of all, it's free. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better financial decisions and manage your portfolio like a pro. So why wait? Go to Personal Capital now and set up your free account. And for a limited time, if you qualify, Personal Capital will give you $100 for every $100,000 you deposit 
up to $10,000. That's personalcapital.com slash TN2. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Apple sent invitations today for a big March 9th announcement in San Francisco. The invitation didn't say exactly what the announcement is all about, but it said Spring Forward, which appears to be a reference to Daylight Savings Time, and therefore the Apple Watch. Apple CEO Tim Cook said previously that the Apple Watch will become available in April, and that suggests that they're going to announce it uh, in March and ship it in April. That's the best guess at this point. Of course, Twit will cover the March announcement at live.twit.com. TV, so you're going to want to join us for that. The Texas-based patent troll company called Smart Flash, which won a $532.9 million lawsuit against Apple this week, is suing Apple again. The new lawsuit focuses on Apple products introduced after the first case was already in progress, including the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus and the iPad Air 2. The patents are related to the management of content files such as songs, videos, and games. After the jury ruled against Apple in the first lawsuit this week, Apple said of Smartfish, quote, Smart Flash makes no products, has no employees, creates no jobs, has no U.S. presence, and is ex exploiting our patent system to seek royalties for technology Apple invented, unquote. Smart Flash has also filed lawsuits against Samsung, Google, and Amazon over the same patents. In other Apple news, Apple is still in the lead in mobile enterprise activations and is pulling away from the competition, actually. That's according to Good Technology's Mobile Index report. iPhones and iPads now make up 73% of global device activations in the fourth quarter of last year. That's up 4%. Meanwhile, Android activations dropped to 25% in the enterprise. Windows Phone got about 1% of enterprise activations, and BlackBerry wasn't counted in the study because good technology couldn't gain access into those activations for technical reasons. Well, here's what else is going on today. Google plans to test Android app advertising on the Google Play Store. The ads will come from the pool of companies who bought ads on, search, on Google Search. If the pilot program is successful, Apple, app, uh, Google will offer advertising on Google Play directly, a site which, until now, has never had any advertising. Facebook's gender options are no longer complicated. The company has followed the lead of Google Plus to allow anyone to add anything to the gender identification field. Previously, users had a few dozen options. Now it's been simplified to male, female, or custom. One limitation, though, your gender description can't exceed 10 words. Facebook's real names policy is still in place. Amazon has hired President Obama's former White House press secretary, Jay Carney, to a newly created position that includes both public relations and public policy. Carney interviewed with both Apple and Uber before taking the Amazon gig. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos appears to want to influence Washington, which is probably why he hired somebody who knows all the press and all the politicians in Washington, and also probably why he bought the Washington Post. Well, Amazon has come up with yet another incredible idea for how to speed up delivery times. The company has applied for several recent patents, one of which is a 3D printing system installed in a delivery truck. So if an Amazon customer orders something that can be 3D printed, the truck can manufacture the object while it's being delivered. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. My name's Mike Elgin. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.